Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. Welcome to my bathroom. Sorry y'all. Hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. This lesson is all about safety data sheets, SDS. Now these are the sheets that are found in every lab, every lab. Every lab that has chemicals. You have to have safety data sheets. These are gonna tell you how to handle the chemicals safely. Now in my lab, I've got two giant thick notebooks filled with SDSs. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of more modern labs that have all of these digitalized. Mine's still all paper. Let's go through one and see what all is found there. Okay, so first I just wanted us to look at the basic format. There are always 16 items on an SDS sheet and all 16 items always stay consistent. So the first thing that's always listed is any of the identifications. The second thing listed, any hazards. How has, if it's hazardous, that's all gonna be here. Number three, it's composition. What's its formula? What's it made out of? First aid measures. If this gets on you, if you breathe it, if you touch it, if you, um, any, any of the things, get it in your eye, it's gonna tell you what to do. Firefighting, firefighting measures. If my lab were to catch fire, the firefighters are gonna to wanna to see my SDS sheets. They're gonna to wanna to know what chemicals I have in my storeroom, and they're also gonna to want to know how to fight that. Because some chemicals, you can't just spray water on because the fire would get worse. I know that seems crazy, but it could happen. So it tells you how to treat if this chemical catches on fire. Number six is called accidental release measures. That's just fancy for if we spill it, how do we clean it up? Some things you have to be very, very careful for. Some things you have to be very careful on how you clean it up. Number seven, how do you handle it? How do you store it? Number eight, the exposures. Like what kind of personal protection do you need? Do you need gloves? Do you need goggles? Do you need a respirator? Because it's so the vapors are so bad to breathe in. Anyway, all of that's gonna be there. Number nine, it's physical and chemical properties. Number 10, is it stabil how st it's stability and reactivity? How reactive is it? How stable is it? Number 11, that's gonna be all about its toxicology, the toxicological information, all the symptoms that it could cause. Is it toxic? Is it not toxic? Number 12, that's our ecological information. And you know what, do you see that? Non-mandatory. It is not mandatory to say what the ecological ramifications would be if this gets out into the environment, like if it leaks into our waterways or something. Disposal considerations, how do you get rid of it? Again, not mandatory. 14, if you're gonna transport this chemical, are there things you need to think about? 15, regulatory information, and then 16, that's for any other things. Now, like I said, this is just a format, it's not for a specific chemical. So let's look at an SDS sheet for a specific chemical and go through and look at all of these items in action. Okay, so I found an SDS sheet for acetone. Acetone, that's that active ingredient in like fingernail polish remover. Fingernail polish remover. Um, it's the main chemical, like your fingernail polish remover has to have acetone in it to remove like any kind of fake nails that you might would have. If you walk by a nail salon, that smell that's coming out of there, that's acetone. Okay, acetone. Now that we kind of know what we're talking about, let's go through here. So section one, remember that's where the identity was. So its name is, is acetone. And also, it's gonna tell you the company where it came from. Now, one thing that was not on the format that's really important is the signal word. The signal word is going to either tell you if it's dangerous or hazardous. Section two, again, it's hazards. Acetone, it's very flammable. It says highly flammable liquid and vapor. So not only is the liquid flammable, the vapor is also flammable. That's why we have this flammable pictogram right here. Quickly tells us in one quick little look, see, this is flammable. Keep away from open flames, sparks, hot surfaces, no smoking around it. The hazard class that it's in is a 2A. That means it could cause serious eye damage and irritation. It could, specific, it could target specific organs. Acetone, not so safe. Crazy, right? 
Okay, let's keep going. Let me scroll up a little bit. Section three, it's composition. What's it made out of? So again, here's its name. Look, there's its formula, its formula weight. Formula weight, that just means if we add up all of these elements from the periodic table, that's what we would get. It could also be called dimethyl ketone or 2-propanone, so it's got its other names here, synonyms. Section 4, first aid measures. Call poison control or a physician if you're feeling unwell. If inhaled, remove the victim to fresh air and keep it rest in position comfortably for breathing. If you get it in your eyes, rinse cautiously with water for several minutes. Make sure to remove contact lenses if you have them. And continue rinsing. If eye irritation persists, get medical attention. If it's on skin, wash. If it's swallowed, call poison control. So all the first aid measures here. Number five, firefighting measures. First of all, firefighters would need to know this is a flammable liquid. Not just firefighters. What if acetone caught on fire in my lab? I need to know how to handle that. It says a dangerous fire hazard from heat. It's a strong oxidizer. Right here, in case of emergency, use a tri-class dry chemical fire extinguisher. My fire extinguisher in my lab, that'll take care of that. Here is this NFPA code. I'm going to talk about NFPA in a different lesson, so if you've not heard that lesson yet, we'll come back to what this means. Section 6, accidental release measures. Well, if we get acid, if I spill acetone in the lab, I want to make sure that I remove all of the ignition sources. I want to make sure there's no fire around, nothing that could catch fire, ignition. Ventilate the area. I want to make sure that this can air out. Contain the spill with sand or another inert absorbent material. So if this spills, I'm not supposed to just wipe it up with a paper towel and throw it away. I'm supposed to absorb it and then throw it away. Very specific information here. Okay, let's go to section seven, handling and storage. So it tells you how to handle it, where to store it. It needs to be stored with other ethos. It needs to be stored with other ethers and ketones, and all that kind of stuff. Keep it tightly closed. Keep it cool, well-ventilated area. Make sure that it's not going to be anywhere near a, something that's going to have static discharge. Section eight, exposure controls personal protection. Wear protective gloves, protective clothing, eye protection. Use latex, not nitrile gloves, because acetone will dissolve nitrile gloves. Wash your hands thoroughly. Use it in a vent hood. And then here are the lower levels, like you don't want to get more than this exposed. I'm not gonna go through that. Physical and chemical properties. Here is basically like its description. It's, color, it's colorless. It has a sweet, pungent odor, like nail polish remover. It's, it'll dissolve in water. It'll dissolve in alcohol. Here's its, all of its other information, boiling points, density, melting point. Anything, any of the properties you want to know about acetone, it's going to be in this section. Stability and reactivity. It's stable, potentially explosive. That sounds not stable, does it? And it says a potentially explosive reaction with strong oxidizing agents, halogenated compounds. None of that really makes sense to us, and that's okay. The shelf life, it's pretty good if stored properly, so you can keep this on the shelf for quite some time. Stable means it's not going to just sit there and cause a reaction all by itself. Section 11, this is for our toxicology information. So it's talking about acute effects. It can acutely affect your eyes, respiratory tract if you breathe it in. It can cause you to get dizzy. It can cause CNS depression if you're around acetone too much. Chronic effects. Dermatology. Derma, oh my gosh. Dermatitis. That just means like skin irritation. Something's being, you know, derm, you know, your dermis, that's your skin. Problems with your skin. Target organs. It can affect the liver, kidney, central nervous system and respiratory system. So all of that's going to be there. Let's keep scrolling up. Section 12, ecological information. Data not yet available. I'm sure it's not good. Disposal considerations, just says review your local and state ways they want you to um, get rid of things. Section 14, transportation. If you're shipping acetone, you need to make sure and label it as a hazard class three flammable liquid. Regulatory information, I don't even know what that means. And then other information, there's other things there. 
the most important things that we need are those top things, those things that were found at the top. Okay, so now we've gone through an SDS. So I'm really hoping that when you attempt your assignment of finding these things in the SDS sheet, it'll be a breeze. Okay, well, that's all I have for SDS. Hope that helped. Bye, y'all.